Sandwich, scone, pastry, all made on the premises. No, just the tea, thanks. I don't want any. Of course you do. We're never going to find you a young man I or... I don't want a young man. Or get you married if you're as thin as a broom handle. Now eat up, Hilda, while Mummy pours the tea. You should, you know, love. Your mum's right. There's no hope in this wall for skinny girls. Upstairs, uh, and above that, well, what you'd expect. All dust sheets, of course. Now, the uh, kitchen and your quarters are down here. And, uh, here is your charge. Oh. Does he bite? If you don't get too close, you won't find out. Hmm. Quiet for London, isn't it? Well, it's a quiet square, which is why Mrs. Derwent asked us to find a caretaker. And uh, parrot minder. There are valuable pieces in the house. Are you sure you've done this sort of thing before? I am sorry, yes, you, uh, you've seen the references, have you? Oh, yes, the references. They're, they're quite flattering. Thank you very much indeed, sir. And there will be no callers. Callers are expressly forbidden. Oh, quite right, too. You've uh, no idea when the lady of the house might be back then? I doubt if she knows herself. She and her son, Captain Derwent, are on a sea cruise to France, on a yacht, so they're quite out of contact. It puts you in a position of great trust, Mr. Watkins. Mr. Critchley, I will not fail you. My aunt had the same problem with her builder. Do you hear that, Hilda? The same name. Oh, yeah, try as she might, she couldn't find you a nice young man. What did she do? Um, pass another scum, will you, love? Mmm, they are good, aren't they? You can't beat our maid, can you? She done what I told her to. And what was that? I said, it's no use taking a girl out to Crystal Palace, Kew Gardens, places like that, only meet ruffians there. And right for the theatre, type of gent you'd meet there, would only have one thing on his mind, saving your blushes. And it wouldn't be a wedding ring, so as the songs is too rude. Oh. <laughs> well, then, where? Concerts. She took my advice, sent her order to a concert. She met a bloke who was on honeymoon within a month. In the park, you mean? The band in the park? Oh, no, that's free. You never know who you might bump into at something free. No, you want to go to the Albert Hall or the Aulian Room, somewhere like that, you know, look in a paper one afternoon when they're playing something nice. Steer clear of Beethoven, he's a definite killer of romance. 
Schubert's best doing stone singing. Oh, it does sound a good idea. Perhaps when they're playing some of Sir Arthur Sullivan's music. Oh, no, too rakish. Get all the blades there. No, you stick to Schubert. All waltzes, I fell in love on still waltz. No, there's my hubby now. You take my advice, love. Stick to Schubert, a couple of hours of him. And you'll be talking really bliss before you know where you are. Thanks for the free. Oh. So bye. Come on, have a look up here, then. Oh, Tom. We are lucky, aren't we? Uh, you're going to have to keep out of sight, mind. Yeah, don't I know it. Well, it's a little something in case it rains. We're going to be down there. What do you think? Go on, have a look round. Oh, I feel at home already. Yes. Like it was made for us, isn't it? You know what I've been thinking? We ought to find a way of using all this. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. We've got a roof over our heads. Now, don't let's muck it up. Yeah, but we ought to use it. You see? Opportunities like this don't grow on trees. Not for us. Miss an opportunity and... You might not get another. I mean, we've got to eat. Oh, that reminds me. Needs your dinner. Oh, well, there you are. You see, I mean, that's not a lot for a growing lad, is it? Well, it's all that was left. Who were those two you were chatting to there? Oh, in the, in the restaurant? Some silly cow can't get a daughter married. Need a lot of muslin, no trumpet. Not seances, no. No introductions. Listen, sit, sit down a minute. Listen, London must be full of shy ladies and gentlemen desperate to meet somebody who don't know how to go about it. Well, we could use this place to bring them together. Well, you mean bring them all here under one roof and pair them off? Right. We we'll have a scramble. How are you going to control them no, all? I'm talking about a nice class of people who know how to behave. I mean, like in Wales in the old days. Every village had a matchmaker. I mean, my auntie Blodwin was one. Yeah, Tom, that's all right for them, but what will we get out of it? A fee. A fee from every one of them. Well, tell me why not. Well, how are you going to get them here in the first place? I'm not that much of a reader. You tell me. Though if it's a three-piece suite, you're wasting your time. There are two on the board already. The Mayfair Bureau. Oh, no one wants bureaus, neither. No, it's not that, uh, no, no. Discreet and genteel introductions arranged for ladies and gentlemen seeking new, pleasing acquaintances with a view to matrimony. Introductions? Ladies and gentlemen? Oh, no, I don't like the sound of that. Uh, tampons a week, you said? No, no, we do not accept advertisements of that sort on this side of Oxford Street. Well, the other shops haven't objected. Oh, well, that's as maybe. Oh, good day to you, Captain. Good day. Two ounces of plug, as usual. Thank you. That could be concealing all sorts of sin and wickedness. But it says matrimony. There's nothing less sinful than matrimony. Oh, I'm sure plenty say so when they mean something quite different. OK, uh, I'll tell you what I would do with you. I will pay the trade rate sixpence a week, two weeks in advance, and a quarter of fruit drops. The address, it's not near here? No, no, it's miles away. You know, Mornington Crescent. Oh, well then, who am I to interfere with folk earning a living? Two weeks? One shilling. And me, a poor widow who knows what struggle means. None of my business what people get up to. 
I'm in the retail, not a missionary. What about the fruit drops? Sir, uh, Mrs. Derwent is abroad at present. This is the Mayfair Bureau. Oh, the, May the Mayfair Bureau, yes, indeed it is. Ah, yes, we're not actually open until tomorrow, sir. Ah. Oh, this is, this is, um, um... Captain Dooley, ma'am, it's about the card. Welcome to you, sir. You'll not regret your visit, I'm sure. My brother will interview you. He does all the gents and I do the ladies in, uh, in your office, brother dear. Ah, yes. If you just walk this way, uh, Captain. Thank you so much. Do take a seat. I'm looking for a cook. Uh, a cook? Yes, indeed, sir. I like my victuals, and my victuals like me. It's all I have left at my time of life. Breakfast, mid-morning, luncheon, afternoon tea, dinner, and supper. My cook has left. Wanted more wages. More than I can pay on my pension. So I made up my mind. Find a good cook and I'll marry her. What's your charge? Oh, the charge? Um, uh, well, um, uh, we charge, um, uh, half a crown for the, uh, inquiry and, you know, a little bit more if a wedding does take place. Uh, is that all right with you? Seems ship shape to me. Excuse me, Captain, a matter of business. Uh, brother dear, I neglected to tell you that as from today, I have been obliged to put up our tariff of charges. Oh, have, have you? You see, Captain, expenses are rising all the time and we want to keep a nice clientele. So from today, it's going to be five bob per applicant and a further five when the wedding takes place. A cheap price for a lifetime of joy. I shan't grumble if you can do it. Uh, brother, would you mind talking to the captain for a moment? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Where, where are you going? He looks like a man who enjoys his grub. Talk to him about puddings and pies. Salmon and pastry is my favourite. <coughs> Though I like leg of lamb with mint glazing. The cellar is empty. We need salt. I want a word with you. This is my rest time. It's about a job. Oh, she won't take on no one else. No, not me. Job for you. <laughs> I got one. Only like a private one. Just one gent who enjoys his grub. Like who? It might be even more than cooking. He might want to marry you. Yeah, what's your game? Get you a lunch. Don't want it when you cooked it. Oh, may I? Do you know, I've never met anyone who can make pastry like you. I do have cold fingers. Well, we are, though. We are closed, madam. You will have to go. We reopen at 12 noon. I'm a friend. And you, Miss Pike, don't forget there are 60 luncheons. It's time you made a start. How does she expect me to do 60 on that old range? It's falling to bits, losing its heat all the time. This gent, one I'm talking about, it's my belief he's got a gas stove. A gas stove? Yeah, bound to. He's that tight. Miss Peck, will you get started? No. Cos I've finished. Do your own bleeding lunches. Um, b being in the Navy, I expect you know quite, quite a lot about pirates. I had a ship's cat at one time. Oh, oh, Captain, what 
What a lucky day this is for you. I have combed our records. I'm quite exhausted. 700 cards I've been through in all, and all because I like the cut of your jib. You, you've been through all 700? Oh, yes, you? Brother D. You know how thorough we are, and I've found the very person. A cook? A woman? A cook of the greatest skill, and a woman of sterling character, as yet unmarried. When can I meet her? Here, right now, in my office. Would you come this way? Oh, Captain, there's just one thing. I have to be honest with you. Miss Pike, that's her name. I like Pike. Cook the way the French do it. Oh, well, she's not a great looker. As if that mattered. Miss Pike, may I present to you Captain Dooley, Royal Navy, retired. Have a look at his stove. And my ice box. Well, we can see you're gonna get along famously. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Of course we are. While you're there, Miss Pike, why don't we run him up a snack? I might. I'll see. Well, good day to you, Miss Pike. Goodbye. And to you, Captain Dooley. Good day. It's gonna work. Oh. Still think it's risky. Oh, we're going to be rich. I've heard that before. This said, we're not only doing good, but we're making money as well. The world needs us. All that on a strength for one customer. Two customers. Perhaps the only two. All right, who's that from then? Mm. Lady uses expensive scent. A discreet inquiry, perhaps. Tim Bob in half an hour is not bad, is it? Excuse me. I certainly hope so. Ah, good morning to you. Good morning, if you would. Like to go in, sir. We will try not to keep the rest of you waiting for too long. Ah, another happy couple. Good day to you, sir. And good day to you, miss. Sir. When uh, you are ready, Miss Watkins, if you would like to go in, miss. Ah, yes, sir. Now, if you were, if you would just uh, sit down, sir. I don't want that one outside. Not, not the big one. Or do you not? No. If you will sit down, we'll just uh, take a few particulars. Uh, age, name, and uh, address, sir. Miss Webster, you see. Yes. Why are we in here? The other two went upstairs. Oh, I use the drawing room for the actual introductions. It gives it a bon ton. There's, uh, there's quite a lot of you, isn't there? But big means a nice disposition. Is that a fact? Oh, well, we never despair. Despair in the Mayfair Bureau of Strangers. I'll start with your particulars. Well, what's it cost? Only the advertisement didn't say. Five shillings now and a further five when the wedding takes place. I'd want someone good for that. Would you? He's nice. Oh, yes. I'm keeping him for someone special. We might pay a bit extra. Done. Oh, I can have him then. Oh. oh, now hold on a minute. We'll have to think about this. Good day to you, sir. And the uh, next gentleman, if you please. You'll be hearing from us, Miss Webster. I'll call back later today. Oh, that's a bit soon. Well, I don't want you finding someone else, do I? <laughs> next. I was wondering... He gets on my nerves, so I'm ready to be committed. I tell you, he's always under my feet. Won't go out. I go in the garden. You know, with your paint box. He doesn't like girls. Won't meet them. He thinks our northern lass is a course. Well, perhaps he just needs... Has no interest in the mills. In the... in the mills? Wall. We've got three. And that's not counting the carpet mill. Everybody knows ain't whistles. They don't, Mother. He doesn't. They're too noisy. <laughs> noisy with the brass piling up. Look, I ask you, Mr Watkins, he doesn't even care about brass. And him a respectable Yorkshire lad. What can I do with him? Well, You'll have to get him off my hands as quick as you can. Get her off mine? Yeah, well, I might, uh, might be able to help both of you. All the brass will help, of course. It will not. So, no, I am thinking in terms of a settlement, do you see? A settlement? You mean a dowry for a man? Oh, I've <laughs> never heard the like. A dowry? Money? I will come to the wrong place, Harold lad. Do shut up, Mother. You're poor and you're a lady. Lady? 
Lady Rodginger Poole. As a church mouse, Miss Watkins. That don't seem natural. Uh, my problems will all be solved if I can move in with my sister, but you see she has no space for the two of us. I don't mind sharing a room. Oh, the idea. So, if Emily were to get married... Yes, I can see that, but without a dowry. She has her own title. Well, you can't put that in a slice of bread and eat it, can you? Have you no money at all? Nothing. Though there is a small house in Scotland, that could be made over to her. Or sold. Regrettably, no. I have tried. It's quite unsellable. It's far too isolated, you see, and surrounded by all that wild, odious nature. I like it up there. No, you don't. It'd be quiet. And, Miss Watkins, I have to ask, your charges? Oh, yes. It's five shillings now, and a further five when the wedding takes place. When? Not if. Oh, yes. When? We're experts here. She's a pretty thing, but it won't be easy. I don't want to be married. Yes, you do, Emily. And don't take too long. Oh, I'm sure we... Oh, excuse me, just one moment, will you? A dowry, indeed. <laughs> Who ever heard of it? A dowry for a man. Not that you're what anybody in the right senses would call a man. I did hear they got a caretaker in. In a frock coat? Mm, I'd have thought an apron more the thing. And all them letters. And I've seen people going in and out. What manner of people? Men and women. Oh, what other sort is there? Was they respectable? Oh, I'd have to say so. But you know how quiet the old girl is. Mm, what of the old school? Should I do something? I tell you what, I'll have a word with Constable Bunkin when he looks in. Ah. He's on nights this week. Don't want to look stupid. But even so. That's right. The least they could do is let us be up there. After all, it does. I am not interested. Oh. Never. Never, never. I will not have my daughter living in poverty. She's living in it now. Lady Rudge has a point. Well, so has Mrs. Entwistle. Now, we must all be reasonable. Uh, make allowances. Allowances come out of my purse. Presumably, you can afford my daughter. Oh, Mrs. Entwistle could afford her six times over. Well, I think it's against all nature having such a settlement. And I think it is not. Needs must when the devil drives. A blessed are the poor, Mrs. Entwistle, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I shall take my business elsewhere. I mean, I'd rather put up with him under my feet. And what's going to happen to Lady Rudge? She can put the girl in service. Service? Oh. A nice young girl like that, well brought up, with a title. A title, Mrs Entwistle? Think of the grandchildren. Mm, the Honourable Entwistles. Grandchildren? Oh, dear. Should we have left them downstairs? Oh, she'll be safe with Harold. You see, that's the trouble. Gladys Cooper herself will be safe with them. Uh, I paint. Answer him, dear. I was not aware it was a question. You have to help. Well, only watercolours. I dote on watercolours. I prefer watercolours, although, of course, one should never admit it. There. I paint flowers. I approve of flowers. And birds, when they stand still long enough. Up in Scotland, there are birds I don't even know the names of. Oh, I've never been to Scotland. Not many flowers, though. It's mostly heather. Out from under your feet, Mrs. Entwistle. And you, Lady Radge, free to go and live with your sister, knowing your Emily's well settled. Now, isn't that worth being reasonable? How much is reasonable? I shall be generous. How generous? That is not at all generous. Well, that is outside all reason. And they live in Scotland? I guarantee it. Which is not the railway. The railway is 70 miles away and it doesn't even have a road. Then it's settled. Settled. How much? Mind your own business. Now, we will arrange the details tonight at my hotel or your home. My hotel, I think. You don't look as though you can afford company. Well, perhaps you'd like to uh, pay the bill now, you know. That'll be one pound if we take the manager's settle. Save you coming back. May I perhaps uh, settle later? Ah, you're short. 
Well, I'll pay and deduct it from the extortionate settlement. Emily, where is he? Harold, come here this minute. Emily, where are you? If you mean the two young people, they lift. Lift? For a walk. I bet we're getting on famously. There you are, you see. But I don't like it. It's improper. And calls for a refund. Oh, no, it's a uh, rule of the bureau. Never no refunds. And without us, they wouldn't have met her, would they? Ah, uh, next, They're please. old enough to look after themselves. Would you step inside, Miss Webster? Oh, dear. Oh, stop mourning you and come on. If you uh, would sit down, I'll just take a few particulars. You're taking your time, and I have paid one and six extra. Well, he's a soldier. This week he's guarding Buckingham Palace. That makes him very difficult to get hold of. Or oh, I could pop down and have a look at him. Oh, no. No, not Buckingham Palace. What am I thinking of? It's Belmoral. I'll oh, come back tomorrow. That's a bit soon. Well, I don't mind coming back tomorrow. Good night, Miss Watkins. No. Now listen to me, Mrs. Who Fung. The minute I heard your name, I knew you weren't our sort of customer. But as if I would have the least desire to marry again. Oh, again, is it? I am a widow. The late Mr. Hu Fung died in a Tong War in San Francisco. We were always great travellers. I took over the business and I'd done extremely well. It's the sort of enterprise that requires a woman's touch. Listen, I don't want to hear another word about it. I don't want to believe what I think you're hinting at. I have a good mind to go around the corner and fetch the nearest policeman. Oh, well, if a lady in business can't make a simple business inquiry, I'll give you good night. You're Welsh, are you not? That explains so much. Allow me, madame. Oh, thank you. What was that about? Well, I saw one of your display cards. And I came to inquire if by any chance you had any surplus ladies on your books. Miss Watkins, the bureau is closed for the evening. Just one moment, brother dear. Why, madame? Well, I'm interested in uh, surplus ladies, as though they have to be good looking. I can offer them employment and an opportunity to see the world. You mean for the white slavery? Psst. My export business. I'm very well established all over the globe and pay handsomely. It's an excellent career for a certain type of girl. I don't suppose they like great big girls. Do you and Posty think it might be a cover for something, then? Oh, Mrs. Derwent was always so quiet, and her son. And now so many comings and goings all of a sudden. It could be wickedness, even in a respectable house. Aye. I blame the old king. Why? Because he didn't choose you. <laughs> A was about the only woman in London he didn't. What will you do? Ah, there's a question. What are you looking so quiet about? Ah, oh, I'm thinking about them two going off like that. Oh, Harold and Emily? Mm. That's all right, they'll find their way home. He's not Jack the Ripper, is he? How do we know? We don't know nothing about them. They're so desperate when they come here, they'll take anyone we give them. Well, what did you know about me when we started, eh? What did I know about you? Yeah. I suppose anything's better than being on your own. Being on my own is something I never minded. Oh. Is that a threat, Thomas Watkins? Because if it is, you can... That's not a customer. Not down here, not this time of night. Well, go on, answer it. You're a caretaker. Good evening, Constable. Good evening, sir. Are you the gentleman who's looking after these premises? Yes, that's right. Well, perhaps you wouldn't mind if I came in, then. Ah, uh, well, now, how can I help you? 
I hear there's been a fair amount of comings and goings. Comings and goings? It's been said. Oh, well, Mrs. Derwent's friends use the place? So many of them. Oh, you're talking about the committee meetings. Committee meetings? What about? Well, they don't confide in me, you know. I'm the grand people. Although I did hear him mention something about a, a ball or something, a charity ball. Oh, a charity ball. That'll be it. Very charitable, old Mrs. DeWint. Have you heard from her? No, no, I, uh, I don't expect to. You know, they're abroad at the moment on a yacht. <laughs> Can I interest you in a beer, Constable? You've got company. Company? No, no, company's not allowed, and quite right, too. Why do you ask? Oh, the table. Well, now I tell you why that is. That's for my supper in a minute. And that's for breakfast in the morning. Saves time, you see. And you've no idea when Mrs. DeWint and the captain will be home? No, no, no one has. Well, let me know if you've got any problems. I will, indeed. Thank you very much for calling, Constable. I'll keep an eye on the place for you. Good night to you. Thank you very much. I'll sleep Good a lot easier. You. Good night to you. I'm getting out. Oh, I won't get into a state. Well, he's on to us. No, he isn't. Stroke a genius, that charity board. Well, he didn't swallow that. He's keeping his eye on the place, Tom. I'm off. The important thing is to keep cool in a crisis. If you can keep cool, you can get away with almost anything. Well, I don't like the police. They make me nervous, especially when I'm up to something. Look, we're not giving up now. Not just when we got the hang of things. Ah, uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning. You should take on more staff. Then we wouldn't have to wait about so. Oh, if we took on more staff, we'd lose the personal touch, wouldn't we? Uh, Mr. Edwards. Somebody at the basement steps. That's why it's a free country, isn't it? Well, who could it be? Ah, uh, well, somebody's selling uh, clothes bags, I suppose. Well, go and have a look. Excuse me, just one moment, would you? Excuse me. So sorry if I could just come through there. I'm so sorry. Why do we have to be quiet? There's a maniac down oh. He's only got to see a woman and he attacks us. Get all sorts here, don't you? But if he's dangerous, why Shh. don't you... I just wondered if everything's in order. Oh, yes, everything's fine. Thank you, Mr. Critchley. Although I must say I wasn't expecting you. I brought your wages for the second week. Oh, yes. Do you know, I'd forgotten all about the wages. You're rolling in money. <laughs> you know, the uh, milk makes the leaves shine. What was that? What was what, Mr. Critchley? That noise. It was the parrot. It was upstairs. No. Yes. Is someone up there? Someone up there? Who could be up there? No, no, no. It was, it was the house. It's an old house. It's always making noises like that. I think perhaps while I'm here, I should go up and... Have you heard from Mrs. Derwent, you know, when she might be back? No. <coughs> what did you say? Oh, I, di I didn't say anything. It was, uh, it was the parrot. What did the parrot say? Uh, well, he said, uh, he said next. It's all he ever says. Why? Well, I, I, I give him his seeds one at a time, you know, to be friendly-like and, uh, and, and when he's eaten it, he asks for the next. Well, what I don't understand oh, is... Oh, be quiet. If he comes up here, you're done for. We're all done for. He sees women through a red mist, and he can't control himself. But if he attacks women, why are we, the men... You as well. He goes for men with a... with a great meat cleaver. Whack, whack. We've had him here before. My brother's the only one who can control him. Oh, well, I'll take your word for it. See you next week. Same day, same time. 
I wasn't born yesterday, you know. Then we can't handle it, Tom. What with a copper and the estate agent, I'm packing it in. Oh, can't stand the excitement. Yeah, well, perhaps I mind a little less than I thought I would. Oh, loyalty's your middle name, isn't it? Right, we get that lot clear, then I'm going. I'm not ending up in clear. You can please yourself, my girl. Uh, the next, Mr. Watkins, please. You know, you're asking for it. Do you realise that, Tom? You're out of your depth. Who's up to their depth? I'm sorry, I, uh, uh... You made a mistake. I, I don't interview the ladies. You're Welsh, aren't you? Of course you are. Like me. So you'll do nicely. Sit down, man. Alice Williams. We don't. Quite nicely off. Wants to marry again. She knows just what she wants, and she's come to London to find it. Oh. And what does she want? A tall, dark, slim young man. Who will appreciate her as well as Emily. And one other thing. He's got to be Welsh. I'm prejudiced, you see. My best years are passing by. Yes, this thing's take time. Well, I have paid one and six extra, and I don't even know his name yet. Uh, his name's, uh, Bill. Bill. Sounds common for a captain. Oh, well, it's, it's William, really. You can call him William, or Billy, or Willie, just as you like. We've spoken to him. What did he say? Oh, he's interested. Well, how interested? I'm afraid I'm not able to disclose that at this stage. Oh. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, he's awfully interested. You see, it's come out that he can't abide thin girls. Oh, lovely. Garth? You come from Garth? That's right. It's between Llandrin Dodwells and Llanort. I know where it is. I lived in Beulah once. Well, that's only our wee neighbours, then. Well, it seems like it. Do you ever want to go back? Oh, that's no place for making a mark. I don't mind where I live. Once I'm wed again, I thought we might go round the world. If he wanted to, of course. Round the world, eh? I'm dying for a cup of tea. A hey, good idea. Let's go out for one. My uh, manager can carry on. Tom? I'm going out. What about a customer? You can check. The details after you, Miss Williams. Oh, call me Alice, us being neighbours. Is that how you like your tea? Strong enough? To stand or spoon in. <laughs> you know, it's funny bumping into each other in London, isn't it? Perhaps it's fit. Aye, perhaps it is. You know something? I met you for ten minutes and I. I, I feel as if I've known you all my life. There's a name for that. You must have felt it when you first met your wife. Oh, well, I, I'm not... Uh, I'm not exactly uh, married. Oh. Perhaps we're both a bit lonely. Could that be it? I, perhaps we are. It's just that I, I feel that there must be more to life than just hoping. Oh, there is. And not often much you can do about it. Not often you can just pack up and clear off, is it? I'm, uh, I'm surprised to be interviewed by a lady. I'm short-staffed. Now, I saw the gentleman go out. Yes, to meet a client. Uh, with a young woman. A client who's too important to come here, lest he might be recognised. Ah, oh, yes, I'm sure. He's a member of Parliament. A member of Parliament with a taste for the ladies. Mm -hmm. Mr. Potter, here we do not deal in ladies, we deal in fiancés. Oh, now, you only say that because I'm new here. You don't trust me yet. Uh, what about up top? Uh, the bedrooms? Now, look here, Potter. 
I don't want you on our books. Apart from being the ugliest man I've seen this week, you're low. So you take your hat and get out of here. Now, don't be like that. A man has a right to be curious when he's putting his future in your hands. Well, no right to be rude. Go on, sling it up. Perhaps I'll come back when you're in a better temper. Yeah, when it rains bacon and eggs. So, you, uh, you don't have any obligations, then? Hold it, Sir Muni. Not now. And it's time I started again. Do you? Do I what, Alice? Have any holds, Thomas? I, uh, I have to look after my sister. The one I saw? Hmm? Being the business you're in, couldn't you marry her off? She's a very difficult woman. And you're very close. Sometimes, more than others. I know who it is. <sighs> We've had a long tea, haven't we? Aye. You know, meeting you has been... What's it been, Thomas? You're like a flower in the desert. I'm not a Welsh poet. Aye, well, I don't get a lot of flowers in my backyard. We none of us do, do we? And even then, we can't always pick them for ourselves to keep, can we? Unless we're very strong. I didn't ought to have come here, Mrs. Zufang. Oh, I hope I don't have to see that dreadful man. No, he's popped out. Oh, yes. Left the woman to do it all. I can manage. Take a puke. I thought you were French. I am sometimes. Mixed blood, I suppose. But why is your brother Welsh and you are not? Uh, we went to different schools. Oh, I see. Now, about my business inquiry. Oh, yeah. My brother says we have to have nothing to do with it. He's squeamish, see. Men. As if the world could ever be perfect. But no, it's not about ladies. There's no shortage of them. Believe me, the spirit of adventure is far from dead amongst English women. Well, what then? You. Me? Oh, go on. You mean... You... Oh, can you just see me all done up in lovely frocks and jewels, taking the wages of sin? Well, not exactly. Oh. I'm an excellent judge of people, which has got me where I am today. I can tell people for what they are in a flash. I like you. I could trust you. I want you to work for me. Oh. But I'd lose my looks, and then what will become of me abandoned in a far-off land? You see, you anticipate. You are intelligent. But no, not as a lady. No, no, no. Uh, work for me in a managerial capacity. Oh, cripes. My enterprises are worldwide, and I am desperate for someone to manage my branch in Shanghai. Shanghai? You would adore Shanghai. Is it a very simple city? Dreadfully. It's a position of considerable power. Say you'll think about it. Take a day or two. Make up your mind at leisure. The money would be very good. Pleasure comes expensive over there. <laughs> now, see me out. There's a dear girl. Mrs. Hufang. So this is something to do with you, is it? I beg your pardon, sir. You are mistaken. I am Mrs. Montmorency of Hanover Square. Pray stand aside. Never had an animal, have we? I've got you. Yes. Yes, I suppose you are. Oh, do I hear regret? That Welsh girl, do you know her? How much do you need me, Sarah? 
Shadow. I mean, how much do you really need me? As much as you need me, I dare say. As much as you love me. If you still do, after all this time. I do. A bit. Sometimes. I must admit, a bit. That's generous of you. I suppose we're better off together and apart, ain't we? Why? Tom, when we leave here, can we go abroad? I am abroad. England's abroad to me. No, I mean real abroad. France, the continent. We'll have enough money, won't we? Right. We'll stay here, eh? That would be best. Oh, I wish this was my own. Mm. Should have come from Dover on the motor. Never. I have reached the conclusion that all boats and motor cars are inventions of the devil. Yes, well, you'll be better, Mother, as soon as we're home. Oh, none of the servants will have returned yet. I need to be looked after. Oh, if only everything would stop going up and down. Here we are. The whole place looks just the same. I am sure we can help you, sir. It's uh, simply a question of confidence. Tom? I am interviewing Miss Watkins. It's important. Oh. Uh, excuse me <laughs> just one moment, would you? I'll, uh, I'll be right back with you, sir. What is it? Listen, this come by hand. It's from Mrs. Hu Fung. I told you I want nothing more to do with that woman. Tom, we've got to get out of here right away. She says the police are watching the house. The wrong house. No, Glenville, it's our house. But, but who are all these people? You're a bit old to be hoping, aren't you, dear? The raid! Oh, 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 Mama! Mrs. DeWitt! Oh. Captain DeWitt! Who are these people? That's Inspector Potter, the Vice Patrol. Arrested oh. every last Arrested. one of them! Oh. Now for the real villains! Oh. Ow! Come on, get a move on now. You can't feel Give us a chance. Come on, Tom. What? Tom, what? my elastic's gone. It doesn't matter. We don't worry about it. Oh. You got a bit of string? Just take them off, will you? What do you think I am? Oh, come on now. Have we got enough to go abroad? Abroad? Where to? I fancy Shanghai. Shanghai? Have you any idea where Shanghai is? Yeah, of course I have. All right, where is it then? Well, it's a bit further than Paris, isn't it? It's the other side of the world and you get seasick on a bill pond. Oh, just my luck. Oh, it's a pity it had to end. My life's all endings. Well, at least you can stop being my sister. You can be Mrs. Watkins now. Are you offering to make an honest woman of me? It's a bit late for that, isn't it? Oh, hell! Not this way! This way! 